There is little arguing the fact that if you find yourself a good fly fishing guide, that you hold on to them and you treat them well because you know that that favor will be returned on the river. Hi everybody, my name is Mark Melnick. Welcome to this special episode of The New Fly Fisher. You know, I've had the pleasure of fishing Yellowstone Teton territory in Eastern Idaho for a number of years, and I've fished with some really, really excellent guides. Let's take a look at some of their teachings and some of the great fish that we've caught while fishing the rivers and tributaries here in Idaho. Absolutely fantastic. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orbis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Route Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Let's take a look at a couple of guides that we got to fish with out of the lodge at Palisades Creek just outside of Swan Valley, Idaho. We meet Josh Jablo long-time guide at the Lodge at Palisades Creek and get ready to hit the river. All right, Mark, we're gonna get going here. We're gonna learn about what we're gonna do today. Yep. Um, and like I said earlier, we're gonna focus primarily on uh, dry fly. Great. So we got one big dry fly and uh, that thing is hopefully gonna float. Uh, there is one peculiar thing that happens in that sometimes they will eat this thing sunk, but for the most part, we're gonna use it as a floater. Okay. Um, on that note, if you ever do see it sinking and you see a fish kind of come out and ambush it underwater and then turn, we're gonna set the hook on the turn of the fish because it's when the fly is under the water and the fish comes out and it eats it and turns, that's when we set them. Okay. Um, it's hard to do, but most of the time we're gonna be looking at this thing, uh, uh, fish coming up to eat this. Great. Um, it's going to be real important today. This is probably one of the single most important things in what we're going to do today is that you have to wait for the fish to eat the fly. Okay. okay. So the finger is the fly. Most people miss the fish because the fish is eating it and they pull right here and the fly comes right out of their mouth. Right. Okay. So what we have to do, especially on the big ones, we're going to wait for this fish to come up, eat the fly and close its mouth and go down. Okay. And it's when it goes down that we're going to set the hook. So the, di okay. the, the difficulty is, is that you've got multi-species that you're dealing with and they eat very differently. Uh, brown trout tend to eat more of a smash. Rainbows tend to smash. Cuddies, which are, you know, the golden pumpkin of the river, they are going to come up really slow. Okay, you might have a brownie do that or a brownie suck it down. But for the most part, the cuddy's going to wallow up real slow and eat right here. But if you pull it here, you're going to miss the fish. Right. Also, if we set to the side, we're gonna miss the fish. We don't set through the smile, we set up into the roof of the mouth. Ready? Take them. It's the timing combined with the bang. I missed the biggest fish I've ever seen on this river eat a dry fly, and I swear the mouth was about yay big. And it ate so slow and so big, I had to wait, 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 and then when I set the hook, I lifted slow. Because in my brain I was thinking, slow, right, slow. You have to combine the slow with the bang. And it's that is gonna hook the fish. Okay, gotcha, sounds great. Josh has a form, a style of teaching that is easy to hear and listen. He is able to look at an angler while he's using his words and figure out which words are working to get that angler to do a physical action, whether it's setting a hook, stopping a back cast earlier or later, Josh, also is a phenomenal fly tire. And he's proprietary in the way he fishes the river. And his method is proven. Josh fishes not where everybody else fishes. He may put on the river in a different place than the other guides. He may put on earlier or later. He may wait. Josh fishes hydraulics and most of us fish banks and structure and features. 
you combine all those things together, you know, his teaching style, the flies that he uses, and the places that he fishes, you're, it's a really unique experience. All right, Mark, we're gonna talk about kind of what it's supposed to look like out here. Okay. We're gonna put our glasses on for safety, because you never know when the fly's gonna come back at you, and I've seen it go bad, I tell you what. All right, so we're gonna start low to the water. If we start our cast high, we only have half a cast to work with, okay? So we're gonna start low to the water, okay? Back, pause, forward. We finish at the water, because if I come back here and then I cock my wrist, it's gonna go up and then it's gonna fall junky and short. So what we want to do is direct this fly with a splat. You want the splat. We want the splat. So normal fishing, you know, we'll call it uh, Brad Pitt, river runs through it. We'll go 15 casts and nice and soft. And then when it lays in there, it's nice and soft. We're not going to do that. We we're want going the dinner to, bell. We're going to smash this thing in there. And when <laughs> that thing smashes the water, that fish is going to be like, whoa, 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 what was that? You know, and when it does that, that's when we got to really look at the way the fish is eating and looking at the right. fly. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna hold the line with one hand. We're gonna start low. I finish about two o'clock up above me and I smash it down. If you stop your cast short above you, it's gonna go short. So we follow through to the water, especially with the wind we'll have today. The shorter you stop your cast, the more the wind chooses where it goes. And we want to smash it down and be the chooser of where it goes. Loud and clear. Yep. Uh, we're gonna work with proximities today. So logs and things of this nature out here. It's the tautness or the tightness to the to the stick that we're gonna be working with, okay? This accuracy shots. Accuracy, and we're looking for one to two casts. I call them shotgun casts, because if you're doing 15 casts and measuring your line and putting it in there, by the time that you wanted you know, to do that, the spot that you wanted to fish is now a quarter mile upstream. So what yeah. we're gonna do is one to two. We're gonna go back, pause, shoot it out. One cast is better than three casts. Two casts is better than three casts, but 15 casts, not so great. Right. Back, pause, shoot it out. We might have to do a little mini mend on it, but here's the problem. We don't have any nymphs right now, so there's nothing to anchor the mend. So when you mend, it's gonna try to pull out of the water and we don't want that, right? Yep. So what we're gonna do is do a little mini flick mend, just a little uh. And it's that movement of the mend that moves the bug. So you don't mind that the bug is moving. No. You don't want it dead drift. Yeah, so like uh, we'll say a lot of the time during the summer we have nymphs on there. And we're looking for as long a drift and as long a soak as we can into a spot with nice quiet bug and zero movement on the fly. Today we're going to do opposite. Today we're going to smash it in there, maybe put it in your trigger finger and vibrate the end of the rod. Cut. Yep, we're going to jiggle this thing. Back, pause, forward, maybe mini mend it. Jig it, jig it, jig it, jig it, jig it. Think of the fly as a rattle. Gotcha. Piece of cake. Yeah, easy stuff. Right. Hey, Mark, I'm going to show you a little trick here that might help us with the sets and whatnot here in a little bit. Yep. Um, so we have two different types of movements with the bugs. We have a grasshopper, which kicks, kicks. We also have a stonefly, which skitters. The key to this skitter is making a V wake and stripping long while you're jiggling the rod okay. and you want to be a little tighter to the fly than say you normally would on say nymph, nymph fishing say and so we're not looking for the big like a wavelengths of line and the slackiness because it doesn't get tight until there right yeah so what we're going to do because some of these fish will be quick we're going to get down and tighter with less wavelengths of line and a little tighter to the bug um, so that we have more of a connection when that fish eats it gotcha yeah, keeping quiet body, strong arm, and that'll help get, especially through the wind. Because a lot of people, when they get, when it gets windy, they'll start to get that, that bob in there with the body. And it actually makes the cast worse because of that. So, and always remember, Mark, I am perfect. Oh, I, I learned that. Yes. I learned that when I got in the truck with you this morning. Exactly. Come in three, two, one, twitch it, leave it there. Um, it's still good, Mark. Take them. You knew it was there. That's awesome, fun. Mark. Good job, Mark. Pretty cool, Mark. That is you're telling me pretty cool. Welcome. Nice job, Mark. So we've been fishing for an hour. Yeah. And we've got the uh, South Fork Slam. We do. We have brownie, cutty, rainbow, hybrid. <laughs> yeah. You know what we don't have, Mark? It's whitefish is a whitefish, but there's always a chance, Mark. They have a small mouth, but I tell you what, they will try to eat them. What? Nice fish. 
Well, Josh, as we're coming up to our pullout here, I got to say that today was an absolutely fantastic day. Awesome, I learned sir. so much. Um, again, fishing with different guides all the time allows you the opportunity for education. Because no matter how long you've been doing this sport, there's always something new to learn. The next day, we're with Lodge at Palisades Creek head guide, Jason Pruitt, fishing a lower section of the South Fork of the Snake, the Lower Canyon. Jason, along with being a fantastic instructor, a, 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 he's easy to listen to, his tone and inflection. Jason doesn't raise his voice, get too excited about anything. If you miss a fish, there's another one. He's not a, uh, he's not a tense guide in, in that respect. Jason hunts fish. Like I say, he takes in consideration the angle of the sun, the moon, the weather, the bottom of the river structurally, the features, and he can deduce where a fish should be and knowing where it should be in his many years, he'll then get out and look and hunt those fish down and he's really successful. This is Jason Pruitt. He's kind of a legend around here as the head guide at the Lodge at Palisades Creek. Jason, we are at Cottonwood. We're at a 15 mile float. What's the order of the day? So the order of the day is, um, you know, we're, we're here in the middle of September. So we're going to see, um, you know, blue wings um, and mahoganies that'll, that'll, that'll throughout the day with little dries. And then uh, the mainstay for us today will be throwing um, golden stones, um, mutants, and which will imitate a grasshopper as well. So right. we get the best of both worlds. And then just for a little something extra, we're gonna throw a dropper underneath that I'm gonna throw, uh, today we have a mahogany nymph underneath um, so that we're at least covering 100% of, of, of the column in the fishery today. And um, we'll make adjustments accordingly. The fish always tell me what I need to do, um, but that's, that's what I initially start out with. Awesome, well, I can never complain about throwing dry flies all day long and uh, we're gonna light it up. Yeah, so we're gonna, you know, most of our day today is gonna be pounding banks. I love to row, I love to pound banks. That's what's so great about the South Fork. Um, the other thing that affords us in a boat and floating 15 miles is we get to pick and choose certain gravel bars and riffles and flats. And um, I love uh, uh, the technical part of fly fishing. So I will hunt very skinny water looking for some big sippers. Um, if it presents itself to us today, I'm gonna take full advantage of it with you, Mark. Awesome, let's go. Sounds good. Buddy. Perfect. I, I try to teach it as much as I can to get people to understand that a mend is like jump roping. Imagine a jump rope. We all jump roped. So when you mend, you're jump roping. So jump the rope upstream. Now, when you want it to stay in that fishy zone once the cast is there, rather than just trying to mend the first four or five feet out of the end of the rod, mend that line towards the bug. Push the line towards the bug. Then it keeps it in that key zone. Mend the other way, other way, yep, perfect. Come on, right there. That's the bottom end of the tran. Oh, nice stick, man, holy God. cow. That's outstanding. Wow, what a fish. Just the tiniest of little sips, huh? I mean, to remove that much line off of the water like you did? <laughs> Good fish. Oh, that was excellent. Barbless hook. It's okay. That's all right, we got the best part of it. Yep. Good, good float. I like that. Nice job. Yeah. Well done, buddy. On the nymph again? That's, I cannot believe this after what the guy said yesterday. Is it a Costanza fish? <laughs> Costanza. Actually, a Costanza fish won't be doing that. I guarantee you this they're not doing that. It's a trout. Good one. Unless it's, unless it's belly whopped. Casablanca will not do that to us. Feels heavy, man. Bobo. Nice rainbow. Outstanding. Just after lunch, had a bite to eat. Well done, buddy. We get Decent ourselves boat. a nice fish. Decent bug. Great colors on it. Uh, nice big, stab. Big, big black back, dark yeah. back. 
Great fish. Look Beautiful at that. fish. So you put in your time, you soak some nymphs. Right. Battle through the day. Yeah. It's not a battle. It's... Watch yourself, the nymphs on your hand. There you go, you're clean. Beautiful fish, buddy. Great fish. Look at that. Clean, clean, clean. Strong, super strong. The great thing about fishing in Idaho is you can do this. You can pull over and you can uh, you can get out and take a look at your fish and, and you're not passing over fishable water. Um, so that's just what we're gonna do. You all good, buddy? Yeah, I'm great. He's thick and he's strong. Well done, he fought really good. All right, let's let him go. So Mark, a little, little tougher day than what we're used to seeing. Um, but again, not indicative of, uh, you know, of what this river is uh, capable of doing. You know, you, you, you fish long enough, you're gonna have um, you know, a couple days that, uh, that are a, a, a little tougher than others. Um, but this river does have a tendency to you know, produce big fish. Um, you know, it was here just a couple weeks ago on the lower stem that uh, my, uh, my lead guide or one of my guides, Josh Hylison, you know, caught the new Idaho uh, catch and release state record, which was a uh, 32 inch cutthroat that was 15 pounds. So, you know, that stuff does exist. Um, you got to put your time in. Um, but today's definitely not uh, indicative of what this, what this river can do for sure. Just a, just a, just a tough day. <laughs> yeah, Jason, you know, we had a lot of fun together today. And you know what? I thought we fished it really well together. We fished extremely well together, I feel. Um, it just, the river just didn't hold up her end of the bargain today, yep. that's it. No, I enjoyed it, buddy. We did everything right. We put it where it was supposed to be. Um, I felt we had the right selection. It just would not give it up today. Yeah, and yeah. unfortunately, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. And, and that's what makes this whole deal so much fun. And we get to come back and, you know, we're lucky enough we get to come back and do it again tomorrow. You bet. It was a pleasure, my friend. Absolute pleasure. God, I'll fish with you anytime you want to go fishing, man. I appreciate that. Many of the guides from Three Rivers Ranch in Warm River, Idaho, have been there for decades. Let's take a look at Logan Martindale and B.J. Gerhardt. So here we are on the shores of the famed Henry's Fork. This is Logan Martindale. He's going to be our guide for the week out of Three Rivers Ranch. Logan, this is a storied river. What are we in for? Today on the, on the lower Henry's Fork, we're uh, going to be doing dry dropper. Um, we're not looking for quantity of fish, but quality of fish today. Right, so size matters, right? Size matters down here. Awesome, awesome. So brown trouts with the odd rainbow, we're in for an unbelievable day. Here on the Henry's Fork, on I can't Henry's believe Fork. it. We're gonna be fishing on the right side when we get up here. Okay. And when we get over here. And I'm a lefty, so you know. Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm sure you know the game. As soon as that goes down, set that hook. When you set it, go straight up. So the weather's changed here. Um, on the Henry's Fork over the last couple of days, and it's actually bluebird nice, and, uh, and these fish aren't liking it. So we're gonna change things up on Logan's suggestion to change things up a little bit. We're actually gonna put a swing into our um, presentation today. So what I'm doing is I'm casting this hopper dropper 90 degrees across with a big mend upstream, and I'm, let and I'm letting it fish down on a dead drift. We've got two nymphs underneath the hopper. What happens at the end of the cast is I'm going to let it come tight out in its lane, but I'm gonna stack mend the line so that the fly line is, is straight upstream from the fly. Then I'm gonna give it a little flick over to the left, let it come across, little flick over to the left, let it come across, another, till it's 90 degrees. So instead of swinging it like you would swinging steelhead or salmon, you're actually doing micro swings in the full presentation. Every time you do one of those smaller mends, it creates the fly, the nymphs to move a little bit. And that could be the trigger to get these big brown trout and rainbow trout to eat. Decent fish. So we just stopped for lunch. We're just about to, like we're still on the bank <laughs> and we're just about to kick off. And I decided to throw the dry dropper out into this run and first cast of the afternoon. It's a good one. Big tail. Yeah. Try to keep them over here out of that stuff. Okay, now come back up to the boat. Nice work. Sweet, man. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Great fish. 
Now, is that typical, a typical fish that you catch here at a, at a Henry's say, Fork? I would say that's for this float, it's probably average, maybe slightly bigger than average. Nice. Henry's Fork Rainbow Trout, that'll play, won't it? This afternoon's gonna turn on. It's gonna be good. <laughs> nice work. As we head down river, the afternoon hatch takes off. There's a ton of bugs on the water. We might have a lot of fun down here. It gets really slow, deep water down here. Uh-huh. Those fit we call it the fun farm backwater. Those fish will just sip like they were up there. One of the things I love about fishing trout in the West is that, you know, no matter whether you're walking or wading or you're floating, if you put your time in, something remarkable might just happen. Now, if you look downstream of me here, there are heads popping up everywhere. We've been waiting for a blue winged olive hatch to go off this morning around 11 o'clock, but it's been cold here in Idaho and it hasn't really happened. But if you look on the surface of the water, there are literally trillions of bugs everywhere. And all these big boys are coming up to feed. So what we're going to do is Logan is setting me up with a dry fly system, um, which has a, uh, a blue wing olive and an emerger. And what we're going to do is actually pick our fish, get the timing of the fish to see how and when it's rising, and then attempt to place that fly in its lane when it's ready to eat. Now, as Logan just said to me, Mark, this could be an all or nothing venture, but you know what, it doesn't matter. Just to be able to watch this is fantastic and to have a shot at them, even better. <laughs> Look at that. Hit. Nice. Nice work. That's where teamwork comes in because I was looking at the wrong bug, man. I really was. Good work. Took the dry fly. Sir. Nice work. Cool, man. Great little brown trout. So stealth is the key, hey, Logan? Yes, sir. 5X. Nice cast. Good fish. The world's yours. Yep. Nice. Ooh, that's nice a big fish. fish. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. It's a giant. Trying to get this fish on the reel, it's that big. Fight them on a high rod tip. And take your time. The water's cold enough that you don't need to worry about exhausting these. Oh my gosh, Logan, it's huge. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up anchor. You ate the green bullet. Oh, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. There is zero saliva in my mouth. <laughs> this is a thrill of a lifetime on the South Fork. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, man. Are you kidding me? My man. Oh my oh. gosh, it's a stud. <laughs> I can't believe it. Biggest brown trout of my life. We fought that fish through rapids probably, you know, a couple hundred yards yeah. down this river. And I'm here to tell you that I'm about to show you the biggest brown trout I've ever caught on fly. Are you ready? Awesome. This is why you come to Idaho. And this is why you come to Three Rivers Ranch. What an unbelievably amazing brown trout. Yellowstone Teton territory is dissected by some of the world's most famous trout streams. Slow meandering streams like the Teton River to big systems like the Henry's Fork and the South Fork of the Snake thread themselves through miles of southeastern Idaho. For trout anglers, it really is what multi-species big fish dreams are made of. Today is Guide's Choice. Hear that? algae so how do you want me to fish this cast to the bank and then just strip it and yeah that little mend is good good long poles with a pause 
as you're reaching up to grab that line again. And a lot of times they'll like that pause to come and get it, just like an injured fish, just giving them a chance to catch up to it. And if you see one coming, don't don't change yep. your, your strip, because whatever you were doing has got him interested or hungry, whatever it may be. Fish. Good fish. Nice, man. Right off that clump of grass right yep. there. Good fish on the streamer. We've been switching it up a little bit to see what color they're looking at and size of fly. Put the white, is this a sex dungeon on here? Uh, that's actually called a trout slider. And it's a cutthroat. It is. Good fish. Nice fish, good job. That's an awesome, awesome cutthroat. Good fish. Woohoo! Pure cut, no spots. Towards the head. Crimson, orange. Good fish. Good. Cause she came out from underneath that tree, didn't she? Yep, she sure did. Good one, came out of that little hole in there. Nice. All right, look at the weather out here. Look at how snotty it is. It's blowing 40, it's cold, it's cloudy. Perfect brown trout weather. Yeah, with this front coming in, it's blowing these clouds in. It's got these big fish on the prow to hunt. That real bright sunny weathers, you know, that we had earlier today is gone. So, um, perfect time in the evening, that witching hour, and uh, just cloud cover. Couldn't ask for better uh, brown trout, you know, streamer weather. So, uh, hopefully, they just keep keeping it up. Ooh. Did you touch it? Nope. So when you cast it out there, mend it before you strip it. Up or down? Up. By the time to sink a bit. Well, that and it gets it there straight it on. Yeah. There's a good fish. Great tip, BJ. Thank you. Yep. Oh yeah. Now I really appreciate what BJ is doing right now because he's actually keeping me at a distance where I'm capable of casting in this nasty wind away from the bank. So I don't have a lot of line out um, that I have to deal with and negotiate. This is a great brown. So in keeping that out there, I can place the cast. I don't have to worry too much about line management. Um, and then on this last cast, he said, you know what, just give it a little mend up and see what, see what you can do. Oh, nice man. fish. Look at that. Woohoo! What a fish, BJ. Oh my gosh. Look at the blue on his cheek. Yeah. It's not even teal, it's blue. <laughs> He's looking at me. <laughs> he is. <laughs> oh, that's a fantastic brown. So the reason you caught that fish, Mark, was that when as soon as you casted it out there, you gave it an upriver mend, which caused that fit, that streamer to come parallel to you and swim cross current instead of flying down river which is like a like a baseball player trying to hit a 90 mile per hour uh fastball which is very difficult so instead of them coming and chasing it and waiting for that to finally swing which then makes it vulnerable you know prey that's when they'll eat it but if we're focusing on that water on the bank we want that to not be coming down the bank and coming finishing here close to the boat. We would rather have it kind of come parallel or upriver so it kind of ticks and then straightens out as the current catches it. That's the prime time for them to eat it as prey. When it starts to swing downriver at the boat, that's fine because we're kind of over that anyways. So good work, good job. There he is. Nice. Oh, did you see that boil? I saw the boil and watch the eat. You ready? Take your time. Take your time. These fish are tough. It's all right. Just be easy. And that's 2x. I mean, I've had fish in here blow up zero. Okay. Come on, darling. 
every bit of this six weight put to work. Saw the boil. Yes! Look at that. Unbelievable. Man, this is turning out to be an absolutely unbelievable evening here on the Henry's Fork. And we would be remiss if we didn't take a look at Chris Scott, a great guide out of Teton Valley Lodge, just outside of Driggs, Idaho. He's got a fantastic story. I was shown fly fishing by my father when I was a little kid, very young, and I didn't really care for it for a while, to be honest with you. I loved going out with dad and, and you know, camping on the Deschutes back in Oregon and you know, getting to spend time with him and, and mess around and throw sticks and stuff. I could have cared less about casting a fly line at the time. Um, when I was in my early teens, I started to realize that I could catch fish on these flies that I would make. And that was like, just the coolest thing. Pretty soon I started catching fish with the flies all the time and it blew my mind. It was just the coolest sensation. And I decided that I wanted that feeling more. And so uh, me and my father had already been coming out here to Teton country and I knew how amazing the fishing was out here. And so I just, uh, when I graduated high school, I just, I, I worked, I did a little bit of work back home in Oregon and then I came out here and I met some of the guides that guided here at the lodge. And I, I told them what I wanted to do and that I wanted to guide. And they got me an interview with Randy, who's, who was Brian's father. And so I just made it clear to Randy and the whole family that I, I didn't know anything. I just wanted to know what they knew and I wanted them to show me I wanted their help, you know? I dropped the ego and just said, please help me. And boy, did they ever. <laughs> and I got to spend about 11 years working under Randy and, and the boys. And, um, and then I left and went to Alaska for a couple years. And I guided saltwater for a few winters in the Virgin Islands. After traveling around for a while, I stayed in touch with Brian. Now Brian owns Teton Valley Lodge. And finally, he just asked me to come back. He said, you know, What's it going to take for you to come back and work with me again? And I told him what that was going to take and he made it happen. And, and that was a few years ago and, and here I am. Yeah, I, I appreciate my boss, man. Uh, Brian's a great guy. We grew up guiding together with his dad and, and, the, and the boys. And uh, when it came time for him to ask me to come back, I had gotten myself into a little bit of trouble legally, around which I was told I would never guide in the state of Idaho again for the rest of my life, as a matter of fact. It wasn't fishing related or anything like that, but that's just how the book reads. And so I'd kind of let that go. And, uh, but then he asked me to come back and I told him what was going on and that I was gonna need his help if he, want, you know, if he wanted me to come back. And, and he, didn't, he didn't hesitate for a second. He just said, just tell me what to do. I'll do whatever you need, just tell me what you need. You know? And so he, so he helped me get a lot of paperwork together and write letters to the guide board and, and all this different paperwork and certificates and whatever it took. As far as he was concerned, he wanted me back and, and he was willing to do whatever it took. And uh, once that was done, it was a simple matter of talking to the guide board some more, uh, giving them all this information, waiting for a meeting with them, which I got. And that went amazingly well. They said, we're, they, they, the guide board basically told me they were proud of me. <laughs> and they, were, they wanted me to go guiding again. I was blown away. So with all that being said, after all that's happened, you know, I never take any of this for granted, ever. You know, this is something that uh, is the most important to me. And uh, it's gonna take a lot for me to give it away again. <laughs> Let's just say that. That's not happening. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I belong and I know it. I always did, but now I do for sure. That's a good fish. That's a happy fish. Nice, nice. Ooh. Might have been a hair close to him that time. Just let it go and see. See how his, his mannerism, the body language changed right as the flies landed? Yeah. He moved a lot more water. Take him. Yeah. Strip, strip, strip. Yeah. That's a big fish, man. Nice. We watched this fish from yards up That's a beauty. feeding and getting happy That's a beauty. and I thought I screwed up the cast by putting the fly too close to this 
Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous cutthroat. Look at that thing. Trophy cutthroat on the Teton River. Look at that. That's oh, a big damn. fish, man. Oh man, look at this one. There we go. Big wild cutthroat. Great job, Mark. Well, you made some improvements to your cast and got the flies turned over perfectly. I'll tell you, well, we, we laid it in a little too close to him there at first and he spooked for a second and I thought he wasn't gonna come and grab it, but you did a good job to leave it there and let him come and take it. Great job. Yep, get him, get him. Get on him, I got him. Careful with him until you see him. He might take off, he might be a real big one. Check and look down at your line. Put a little less pressure on him, a little, little bit less pressure. There you go. I'm gonna pull in here to the bank. He should, he should work himself back up the bank. Pull him hard to the right, hard into the bank. There you go. Still haven't seen this thing yet. Okay, it's I'm a good anchor. fish, man. I'm gonna anchor right here, buddy. I'm gonna anchor right here. Oh, he took that, he took the nymph on the, uh, on the mend. I guess it was brown. He hasn't jumped either, that's the other thing. No, it's a rainbow. Nice rainbow. Good one. Nice, good job, nice stab. Nice work. Pretty stuff, man. Look at the size of that Boy, rainbow, what a great last fish. Last thing of the day, last, last few hours of the day. The sun's getting a little lower. Huh? You gotta, How do you like that? You gotta work at that, you gotta work. Put in some work. Good fish. Yeah, put in a little work. You never know what'll happen. Might just be a big, beautiful cut bow like that. Fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory, you're allowed to fish with three flies. Today, we've got a terrestrial and two nymph droppers. Um, now, there's a trick to fishing three flies that you have to be careful of because you will get tangled. Uh, you need to open your loop. So in order to open your loop, you need to come over top of, it's almost like a lob. You need to lob those flies over so that your loop isn't squishy, isn't tight, and you're not gonna tangle on yourself. It's gonna save you a lot of time to catch more fish. Yeah, so looking down, you see the shelf showing up here in the middle. So we're gonna fish it off the right of us. I'll start slowing us down. We'll just set up a drift over there to the right of us. Yeah, somewhere out in there. Take him! Nice. Just like that! Nice! To the dry, that's right! That's fantastic. That is absolutely amazing. Good fish too, man. I hope we got all that. Yep, so now once he's in the net, okay, you can hold on to him. I got him. So what we're doing is we're actually gonna move over so we don't blow over all this water. Um, and then we're gonna let this fish go and we're able to keep fishing. That fly just popped right out. That's awesome. Good. That's actually a right here's pretty fish. damn good. All right, so we pulled over to the side so we can look at this fish safely. And to get, and to get a fish of this quality on a surface fly, Unbeatable, unbeatable, just perfect. I'm fishing a drop off here from a, from a rocky flat. And it's important when you approach the drop, not to just go charging in and go right to start fishing the, the obvious structure. You want to work your way out. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing these nymphs out on a tight line and working my way to the drop because just like steelhead fishing, these fish could literally be at your feet. So you don't want to overpass water that could hold fish. Work your way out. Eliminate the water that's in front of you as you get to the drop. There he is, there Just he is, like big that. brownie, big brown, big one. Let him run, buddy. Atta boy. Ah. Nice. Ah. Well, that is a huge oh my brown God. trout. 
<laughs> so cover water. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say. Man, he's still in charge. Large and in charge. Just keep walking down the shelf. Got him. Got him. Sweet. What a fish, man. Nice fish. What a fish, what a technique. What do you eat, the drown or the, uh, pe uh, the rubber legs? The rubber legs. How do you like that? There you go. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. What a fish. What a fisher. Big old fins, fins yeah. on them, huh? Pretty, got a little adipose guy. Yeah, yeah. Got teeth on them too. Yeah, he does. Big mouth brownie. Yes, what sir. What a beauty. Thank you, sir. Good what job. What a great technique. Right on. Tons of fun. When you approach a situation like this, usually the most aggressive, biggest fish is gonna be the first one to charge the fly and eat it. So it's really important that your first cast or two is on point and your mens are good and your tension's right so you can hook them. So you can't be too casual about the first two casts. It's really important. Focus, get a good drift, watch your indicator. Because like you saw, that was his first cast in, that, in this spot. And I'm really happy that he was ready to go. Great job. Let's do that again. There you go, good cast. There he is, there he is, we got Ooh, him. That's a big we one. We got him, strip, strip, strip. Let him run, man, let him run. Wow, what Has a fish! Hashtag I love my office. <laughs> great job, man, great job. That was awesome. I'm gonna go grab the net. Yeah, great. Woo! So these fish are just sitting right off this ledge. And uh, man, oh man. Anybody ever tells me that indicator fishing's dull? I got something to tell you, it's not. Not at all. I'm curious to see what he ate. Oh, he ate the drowned terrestrial. Nice. He ate that sunken dry for me. Yeah. That's a good fish right there. I'm happy with that one. I'm gonna surf him over to you. Boy, did you see him jump right after you hooked him? He yeah. tore all over this place. He did. Oh, that was great. King of the pool. Nice grab. Good job, Chris. Great job, you. Pretty work, man. You're doing everything I ask you. Sweet and it's paying dividends. So the orange on this brown trout is absolutely remarkable. Look how orange that is. Pink hues, big old adipose fin. Fantastic, fantastic fish. Well, that's about all the time we have for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. I wanna take this opportunity to extend our thanks to all the great guides in Yellowstone Teton territory that have made these episodes possible. For more on our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. My name is Mark Melnick. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it, and what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you up and down Highway 20 Yellowstone, Teton Territory. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone, Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Route Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,